one of the things that they teach you over and over again in medical school is that 90% of medical diagnoses come from the medical history. So there's, there's nothing of greater importance than the communication between a provider and their patient. Alex and I were medical students here at UCSF, and we had finished our third year of training, our, our clinical year, and we just spent a year in a hospital, and the night we were commiserating, I just finished a shift at San Francisco General Hospital, and I had a panel of patients, none of whom spoke English, and it was frustrating because if these patients had been able to communicate with me and I had been able to understand them, the day would have gone faster, the treatments would have happened earlier, things would have been more streamlined, and I think they would have been happier. And I would have been happier if I could have done that earlier. And so this is where the commiserating started. And so we, we having uh, had some familiarity with technology, um, thought it would be great if we could make this tool to help sort of expand the flexibility of the providers, of not just the medical students, which we were at the time, but our attendings, our other residents, the nurses. And then we thought paramedics. Anyone could benefit from this because providing timely care is better. This was really an experience in living in San Francisco. So in order to put this together, we needed to build a team. And uh, the first major benefit to Alex and I is that we came from UCSF. It's a community that's dedicated to serving this patient population, not just at the UCSF hospitals, but in partnering with San Francisco General Hospital. We take care of patients who come from all different backgrounds, who speak all different languages, and whose socioeconomic status vary widely. So we found people who are supportive among our colleagues. Um, we found a professor who is based at the VA, who we'd worked with uh, as, as students, who was really interested in helping us put together the best quality content we could. Um, Lawrence Tierney is uh, one of the most generous professors we worked with, and he spent hours and hours uh, reviewing content, making suggestions, making the, um, the tool that we were trying to create, um, which at this point was unproven, uh, the highest quality possible. We're lucky in that he literally wrote the book on medical history taking that we used in medical school. That was fairly convenient. One of the key features of, of Metababel is that it's available uh, completely offline. So it, obviously a lot of the environments in which you know healthcare interpretation is needed are resource poor environment, environments. A lot of hospitals are cut off from cell signal. Uh, a lot of relief environments don't have cell signal. So we wanted to create a tool that was entirely self, self standing. Um, so this, once you download it, it's all there. You don't actually need an internet connection. And it's perfect because I have no internet connection now. <laughs> <laughs> but I do have a version of Metababel on the iPad. So you can take a systems based approach, which is how. Alex and I were taught to approach a history in physical. And you could, for example, pull up a pulmonary complaint. And the most common pulmonary complaints here domestically are cough, dyspnea, or shortness of breath, and hemoptysis, which would be coughing up blood. So we can look at cough, for example. And you can see that there's a list of questions, uh, all of which pertain specifically to making a diagnosis from, or listen to it in Russian. Начали ли вы недавно принимать какие-либо новые препараты? Or uh, in Mandarin Chinese. And what you'll notice is um, the people speaking these languages are, are native speakers. They're all medical interpreters. Uh, they're actually all female because as it turns out, um, the clarity of audio is just better with female voices. We went to available literature on what were the most frequently spoken non-English languages uh, in Northern California, specifically the Bay Area, since this is our home, and we, we figured we would try a proof of concept. And so we arrived at Spanish, Russian, Cantonese, and Mandarin. The fifth language came out of a, a need. Um, as we were developing this, uh, this tool, uh, the tragedy in Haiti occurred, and we thought although our initial plan was to make this available for domestic providers here in the United States, that this actually could be implemented relatively quickly with the right resources um, for relief efforts abroad. And so that's why Haitian Creole is one of our first five languages. And what we did is we cobbled together what money we could and put out a, a national search actually for an interpreter. 
Uh, and in the course of, I think, three weeks, we were able to put together a, an entirely functional version. Uh, this was the first time we'd worked outside of the UCSF family for interpretation. Um, but we were really happy with the results. And what we have been able to do in the time since was uh, make this tool available to, uh, to providers we know from the UCSF community who worked abroad. And it was our first, uh, it was the first piece of our software that was released. It was made available for free, and I think this reinvigorated our team to try to make everything we had done available for free. The pace of innovation in medicine is what it is. It's relatively quick, but it pales in comparison to the pace of change of technology. Yeah. And even when we began medical school, the tools that we use today didn't exist, and the ideas that we're capitalizing on today didn't exist. And this has been a real life education and how we can bring technological resources to bear for treating patients, for improving their condition, and for hopefully beating disease. Um, what we're learning every day is how to do this better. And what we're hoping to do is provide one example of how this can be done well. And we're really lucky to be here at this moment when this is being developed because maybe we can uh, be a part of this sweeping change because it's going to change healthcare like it's changed the rest of the world. You know, a place like UCSF really, it runs on giving, not just from, from donors, but obviously from all of the people who, who work and, and live here, from the students to the attendings to the nursing staff to all the ancillary staff. You know, uh, this is a place that really brings brings people together who are interested in giving themselves, giving of themselves to their community. So we ask that people simply join in. I don't think of medical school as a, a technical training yeah. experience. I don't think of it as uh, training to get a job. Medicine in some ways becomes your life. It becomes your persona. And you're joining not really a school, you're joining a, a family. I started here as a medical student, I stayed here as an intern, I'm staying here as a resident, maybe a fellow, maybe an attending. Uh, and I say that because I don't want to leave. The opportunities available here are, are unique, uh, and the people who are available to me here are special. Uh, I think um, there's a cost associated with going into medical training, but it's, it's not a monetary cost. You're giving yourself. Uh, and the incredible value you get by working with these people and working in this environment, I would gladly pay for. Alex and I had an idea, uh, and we believed that this was important. Uh, we believed that what eventually became MetaBabble was something that we should do and that somebody needed to do. We had an idea of how to implement it, but we could not have done it by ourselves. We did not do it by ourselves. We struggled at times to figure out how best to put something of this magnitude and of this scope together. But during each struggle, we found someone who had vision or experience that we didn't, and they gave that to us. And on occasion, it was a senior attending physician who went through our content. But on another occasion, it was someone who had experience with the legal ramifications of putting together something like this, or someone who had a brilliant idea about where to find the translation and interpretation resources. We've continued to be impressed by what other passionate people in our community can do to help move along something that we believe in.